Okay, so you've shot your 360 panel images with your drone or other camera, and you're ready to make an interactive 360. Uh, yes, there are several programs you can pay for that'll do this very simply, um, but I like to do it free with freeware and shareware. We're going to start out with a free download from Microsoft called ICE, Image Composite Editor. Once you've downloaded ICE, just open it up, drag your images into the first screen. You'll see them all in order. You've got four steps. We're going to go from import now with a simple panorama. Click next. It will go through all the aligning of the images. I've sped this up for the video purposes. This can take a little while if you have a slower computer. Once it's finished, you're going to see the stitch screen. Now, there are many options here. The only one you care about is to be sure it's set on spherical. And click Next. I've never had any of these not, not line up properly. Now, you're going to have a little crop area at the top, generally. Uh, maybe sometimes at the bottom. I select just using the auto complete. Again, it'll take a minute to figure everything out. And then it will show you a wonderfully cropped image. I've never had it not work. You check the use auto completion box and click next. Now we're on the final export screen. Basically, we're just going to um, leave it as a JPEG image. Leave the quality generally set on uh, 75 and export it. Put it someplace where you can find it because now we're going to open it in Photoshop or your favorite image editing software. I consider Photoshop free because you can get uh, the CS2 version download for free, which is what we're using here. Nothing new or fancy. Just bring that stitched image into Photoshop. And here you could manipulate it if you'd like. What we're going to do is change the canvas size. We're going to use the little drop-down arrow to move the uh, screen to the bottom. You need to be on pixels if you're not already. Important step here is we need to divide the width in half. In this case, 16384 divided by 2, 8192. For this to work properly, we do need to change that height to exactly half of the width. Now you're going to have the image at the bottom, and you're going to have white space at the top. You can leave that, and you'll have a white space on the top of your pano. Um, or, in this case, I just use a simple box mask to select that white space. And then I set my background color to something close to the top of the sky area. Um, I'm just trying to get generally close in this case. You could work with the wire, uh, rubber stamp tool or many other tools and complete the sky um, much nicer. But I'm doing fast and simple. So we're just going to turn that sky colored. Be happy with that. And save it. I generally like to keep pretty high uh, quality. Maximum is fine will still upload decent. Now that you have your newly sized image, you're going to open it in a pro pro program called EXIF Pilot. It's a free download. I'll have the link below. And you're going to just select that. Select the EXIF tab to the right. And then click the Edit button. There's quite a few tabs here. You can fill in as much information, keywords as you like, tags. The important one for the 360 is Photosphere. Just type in MS Ice in the top. Make sure your panorama viewer is set to true. And your panorama projection type is equitangular. Equitangular, that's a tough one. Then you need to just put the size of the image, height and width next four boxes that alternates. Just be sure you get the right sizes in there. It's important for the coding of this photograph. The bottom two are crops. Again, for the advanced, just leave those at zero. Now that you've written this metadata 
exit that into your file, it can be viewed uh, anywhere as a 360 pano. You can see it's rather large, 18 megs. That's fine. Uh, the size is correct. You're twice as tall as it is wide. Or twice as wide as it is tall. Just drop that into your Facebook upload. And um, again, we sped this up. The important thing is that you'll see a little globe in the center of the upload. That means it sees it as a 360. Once it uploads, you'll have a chance to edit the beginning view. I like to do that. In this case, it picked an odd spot. I want people in this. You can even use the zoom wheel to tighten up that beginning shot. It'll look blurry until it clears itself, but the final results will be beautiful. Tag your friends. Check in the locations. While this is finishing and posting, you will now have a wonderful new 360 pano on your page. Of course, it gives the preview that you set. When you enlarge it to full screen, oh, you also do get to set geographically on Facebook where this was shot. It pulls that information from the photo. In full screen mode, of course, you can see that it functions properly. We're able to spin it around, zoom in and out. I find this to be the fastest, easiest, free way to make 360 panels. Uh, it works real well. You can see that at the top, uh, we've got that blue. If we filled in the clouds with a brush tool or whatever, we're in the case of, of this case, we're in a windy environment. We always use legacy pano mode on our drone, which does not take the up photos. Um, you can take them manually or use the regular mode, and it'll take them. Another thing that we've found is that there is another great site out there to share on. It's called Kula, link below. It's a free site that lets you upload up to 100 panos a month. Uh, you just simply... Uh, like Facebook, drag your newly made pano into their upload box, and away it goes. This is nice because it lets you set um, a little more, do a little more editing than Facebook. Um, you can put in a nice description, of course. It's important in this description if you want to be found on, online, and it happens instantly, that not only do you use your description and keywords, uh, location things, uh, you know, anything that really describes where and what the photo is that people might search for. Uh, ultimately, that'll get found in Google. But if you want instant gratification from Kula <clears throat> and their feed wall, uh, if you put uh, keyword tags in here with your hash sign, and in this case, I put Colorado hash drone hash oh my god road, uh, you will come up instantly. You can apply filters. Um, you can apply lens flare, which is kind of cool. If your photograph isn't real exciting in the sky, you pick the, hot, the hottest or brightest area and double click on it. Um, and it will put in the lens flares, which you can then um, adjust. This is also used for pulling that hot spot out of the sun. Um, you select lens flare and then pull this down. And it dims that sun down a little bit. I like to share the location. It pulls the geo data right from the image and tags it for Google Earth. You can also set the heading just like you did in Facebook by um, targeting the opening view that you'd like to see and clicking the set heading button. And that's about it. Uh, once you save this, um, it'll be instantly available for, on your wall and it'll come up on a feed where other people will instantly be able to start seeing it and searching it out. Enjoy your 360. And don't forget to subscribe to Rocky Mountain Flyers.